Happy Friday. Good Friday, that is. And what a good Friday it is. WebCME wants you to start your weekend with a win. The Clinical Connection Friday feature is Genetic Causes of Rare Disease. This topic is truly one that is near and dear to my heart. 26 years ago, my son Jeffrey was born with a rare birth defect, a condition called classic bladder extrophy. The kidneys and urinary tract are the sites affected most frequently by congenital malformations. Approximately one out of every 200 children suffers from such a malformation. And one of 20,000 newborns is affected by one of the most severe forms of genitourinary malformations, bladder extrophy. Being a physician was both a blessing as well as a challenge in my role as a new father. I truly struggled with balancing my desire to manage things clinically and being on the other side of the fence, the patient side. My wife Kathleen, a nurse, also struggled with contrasting emotions and intellect. We frequently wondered and asked ourselves, why us? What did we do wrong? But we were repeatedly told, we don't know what causes bladder extrophy. You didn't do anything wrong. Well, that wasn't a great answer. But fortunately, that answer is no longer the case. Due to the dedication of an interdisciplinary team of researchers under the direction of Dr. Heiko Ruder, an extrophy patient himself at the University of Bonn Hospital, a gene which is associated with classic bladder extrophy has been discovered. Using blood samples from a total of 210 patients, the scientists have isolated the genetic information and compared it with control group of healthy persons. Using automated analysis of over 700,000 DNA genetic markers, a clear connection with an altered gene, ISL1, located on chromosome 5, was identified. 25 years ago, Kathleen and I founded a support group for children with extrophy. The Association for Bladder Extrophy Community is now an international network for patients and families living with bladder extrophy. The ABC supported and participated in Dr. Reuter's research. I am very pleased to be joined by the Executive Director of the ABC, Ms. Pamela Block. Hello, Pam. How are you today? I'm great, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the ABC? For example, how many members do you serve and how many countries are represented by the ABC? Sure. Um, we at the ABC believe that all people affected by bladder extrophy can realize their greatest life purpose and potential. And we are currently supporting over 1,500 wow. uh, patients in over 20 countries. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. You know, when Kathleen and I started this group uh, way back when, we had uh, an initial membership of about 75 families. So you've done a great job in growing this. And now truly, 20 countries, that, that's an international effort. That's fabulous. Uh, speaking internationally, I understand that you recently traveled to India in support of children with bladder extrophy. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your trip? Sure, yes I did. Um, this year um, the ABC was invited um, to join um, a group of doctors who had started um, this mission trip about seven years ago and going over to India every year treating patients with bladder extrophy. Wow. It has grown um, to where now um, patients in India are finding um, the ABC and reaching out to us and we're actually setting up these surgeries ahead of time for the doctors to go over and, and work with them. Amazing. This year um, we saw over 130 uh, patients and families and My goodness. Performed, uh, performed over 30 surgeries. Oh that's fabulous. You know as a parent of a child with extrophy I, I know how those families feel and must feel they're isolated and anxious and, and, and worried and, and I'm sure that 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 effort was, was, was truly gratifying, not only on your side, but much appreciated on their side as, uh, as family members. And so I, I commend and thank you for that. You know, this uh, video segment, we're talking about a very important discovery in the field of bladder extrophy, uh, the altered gene, ISL1. Uh, can you tell us what Dr. Uh, Reuter's discovery means for bladder extrophy patients and, and families with extrophy? 
Absolutely, Jeff. Um, when I saw the article um, and when it was released, we put it out on um, ABC's Facebook, and we had over 2,500 um, wow. people read the article, and we had um, it shared over 57 times. So people Great. really are um, interested in this. Some of the comments that have come back um, from our patients that have uh, reached out to ABC, some people really aren't sure how they feel about the news. Um, others shared with me that they cried. Oh, my goodness. Um, one adult with BE said he was <laughs> glad that um, this information is out there and um, wants to know why it took so long. Um, and then um, another comment that I received is that many hope that this discovery will help doctors detect the gene and prevent anyone from ever having to suffer from bladder extrophy again. Now, you know, the ABC is certainly a support group, but one of the functions and one of the things that you've uh, taken on is uh, sponsoring educational webinars. WebCME has been very instrumental in helping push that forward. And I know that uh, you have uh, persuaded Dr. Reuter to uh, come on one of these upcoming webinars and talk about his exciting discovery. Do you want to provide the viewers with a little bit more information about this upcoming webinar? Sure, yes. We um, we have not locked in a date yet, but it'll be airing shortly. Good. And we would love, we will be having uh, Dr. Reuter talk about his latest discovery and answering questions firsthand to the community, um, all of the questions that they um, want to have answered about his, great, his latest research and where does it go from here. That sounds like an exciting webinar. And Pam, you're running just an outstanding organization. If anybody is interested in checking out the ABC, contributing uh, and making a donation, we would love to have you join us. Well, Pam, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you for your comments. And folks, that's this week's win. We do hope this clinical correlation will enhance your practice of medicine. We all need to learn to be more empathetic. An insight like this can help us as physicians to become just that, more empathetic. Be sure to send us your questions and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Please enjoy a safe and relaxing Easter weekend.